So let us let us try to make the exercise that we, we I gave you yesterday. So we have uh, u du over dx1 plus du over dx2 equal to 1. Okay, this was the, the exercise of yesterday, and our notations were, let me write it here, <coughs> sum from 1 to n, vi of x, du over dxi equal f, vi of x <coughs> and u, we are in the quasi-linear case, sorry, so vi of x, u of x, u over dxi is equal to f of x u of x and u equal u bar on sigma. This is in omega. This was our notation. We are in Rn. Uh, x in omega in Rn. OK, so the exercise is this. Solve this uh, coupled with the initial condition u equal u bar. Now, so here n is equal to 2. Sigma was this segment, 1, 1. one. <coughs> x1, x2. Uh, so this is sigma, and u bar was <coughs> was what? U bar. So now u bar of sigma was one half sigma <coughs> for any sigma. <coughs> so sig uh, capital sigma was parameterized. Parameterized by a map called phi, say, from 0, 1 into R2, taking sigma into uh, sigma sigma. So this is a parameterization, regular parameterization of this uh, <coughs> segment. And uh, we have already checked that uh, the transversality condition was satisfied. So we can start our characteristic system. <coughs> that we have, I think, already uh, written yesterday. So it is x1 dot, where dot means, remember, d over ds, d over ds. So let, let me write down here the characteristic system, x dot equal to d of x y, y dot equal to f of x y. x of 0 uh, is equal to x bar, uh, say phi of sigma, and y of 0 is equal to u bar of phi of sigma. So this is the system of characteristics. <coughs> and this, these are now coupled together, and they, gave, and they give a solution x depending on what? Depending on s and sigma, OK? Actually, as I said, uh, one should also, could also take the dependence on the initial time, which is now 0. So I don't write it, the dependence. So it is just x depending on s and sigma and y depending on s and sigma. These are the local solutions for. And the, the solution u of x is locally equal to uh, y of s of x sigma of x. Huh? Because we have the, the change of variables uh, that we have discussed in the last lectures. OK, so, so now uh, we, we, who is the capital? The, so f, f f of x and y. So I have said n is equal to 2. f of x and y is equal to 1 now. 
and b of x and y is equal to b1 of x and y, b2 of x and y. And what is, is, is it? It is y. y, the components are the, for the first derivative is just y, and then 1. Hmm? Because we are adding a, a new variable y in the space, and looking on the graph, y is equal to uh, to u of x. Hmm? OK, so this actually is independent of x. And the vector x depends only on the vertical, com on the vertical coordinate y. OK, so this says that uh, x2 dot is equal to 1. y dot is equal also to 1. Uh, and x of 0, x1 of 0 is equal to uh, let's see, phi of sigma, so sigma. Um, phi of sigma, yes, is, is sigma. Hmm? Sigma, sigma. So x1 of 0 is sigma, x2 of 0 is sigma. And y of, uh, y of 0 is what? y of 0 is u bar of phi of sigma. So phi of sigma is sigma sigma, and u bar of a point here identified with the sigma is one half of sigma. OK, so actually u bar, maybe, maybe we, we should write u bar of phi of sigma to be extremely precise, OK? Because u bar, we think of u bar as defined here in the physical space. So u bar at the point here is exactly the value of u bar uh, so this point here is, is an, an image of an embedding phi. So uh, u bar of phi, u bar evaluated at phi of sigma is one half of sigma. Okay, this this is the okay. So I think that we also we have already found the solutions to this uh, yesterday. So let me copy <coughs> copy the solution. So the solution that we found yesterday, solving explicitly now this, this system, which is very easy now. So it is uh, x1 of s and sigma is s plus 1 half sigma. No, sorry, x is s squared plus, plus 1 half sigma s plus sigma. This, this is uh, x1, OK? x2 of s sigma that we found yesterday is s plus sigma. And y of s, y of s and sigma is s plus 1 of sigma, OK? So, uh, so this, this is what we found yesterday, simply solving that. And then we have the problem of, uh, of the change of variable. So what is the change of variable? So the change of variable is the following. We have the space of parameters. Namely, we have the interval 0, 1 that we called maybe u. And then we have this uh, delta. And this is minus delta. So this is 2 delta. Um, and then we have the map d going into a neighborhood of, uh, of sigma. So and this is the following map, given s here. Uh, and Sorry, given s here and sigma here. This gives us the solution, x of s and sigma. And this can be inverted, taking a point x in n into some 
into an S of x and a sigma of x. So, and what we are using here in the definition, in the, in the expression of the solution is exactly the inverse of this, is exactly this mapping. So at any point x, the solution u here is exactly uh, the value of y evaluated at this uh, sigma of x and s of x here, at some point here, going here. OK, so this is the, the situation. So we have to invert the system, essentially. So we have to invert it. And so we, we, we want to, to, so given x, we want to find s and sigma. So given x. Given x1, we want to, uh, to find sigma and s solving this, OK? No, so the point is, given, uh, given, uh, s, given x1 and x2, find s and sigma. Okay, this is the point. So maybe we can subtract. Maybe we can write x2 minus x1. Okay, this is a system of one equation is nonlinear. So, but let us try to do that. So we have uh, uh, x1 minus x2, for instance, x1 minus x2 is equal to what? It is equal to s squared over 2 plus 1 half sigma s minus s. OK. And then I, we see that we can, we can say do this. Uh, so s plus sigma minus 1, uh, minus 2. It is s plus sigma minus 2. OK. And therefore, uh, since s plus sigma is x2, uh, this is s over 2 times x2 minus 2. And this gives already s of x, because we can therefore say that s is equal to s of x, namely s of x1 and x2, which is equal to uh, 2 times x2 minus x1 divided by 2. Minus x2. This is s. OK, and therefore, sigma from the second equation, sigma can be found from here. So it is x2 minus s, which is precisely x2 minus this. OK, so x2 minus 2, x2 minus x1 divided by 2 minus x2. Okay. And so we have inverted the map. And then since y, I have erased, uh, I have erased what is y. Oh, no, it is there. So our solution actually is s plus 1 half of sigma. So it is s of x plus 1 half sigma of x. And therefore, it is uh, this plus 1 half of this. It is 2 x2 minus x1 divided by 2 minus x2 uh, plus 1 half times x2 minus 2 
Okay. This, this is, if there are no mistakes, this is the solution of our PD, of our Cauchy problem, if there are no mistakes. Okay? So this is... Our solution. <coughs> okay. Maybe we can uh, we can. I can give you a homework. So let me let me erase now everything. There is a homework that you can. So for, uh, we, we have, for the moment, studied with, with, with some detail the, the, the problem. Uh, so for the moment, philosophically, what we have done is the following. Okay? We have to solve a problem of this sort. So let, let me now uh, shift to the old notation t and x, just to, uh, so let me, let me shift to the more familiar notation, say, like this. Okay? So, B of Tx, uh, say, times grad u equal of uh, Tx. Uh, B of Txu, Txu, Txu times grad u equal of uh, Txu. This is the old notation. It is more familiar. Uh, so, uh, uh, so now, now, so x is in our n, small n. T is uh, in R, say, and uh, so with the previous notation, uh, we have this, okay? And this is the space gradient, only with respect to x. This is T, x, and u. Okay, it's philosophically, and then we have assigned a condition, so here, say, in, in omega, and this has, we assign a condition at time zero, just uh, on uh, equal t equal to zero. Uh, and uh, so this is the, the, the more familiar notation. Instead of using x uh, uh, with the, as before. So the, the, the philosophy was how to solve this. Well, we solve a system of ODEs, ordinary differential equations. And uh, maybe it's slightly implicit, but uh, we can find u of Tx uh, via the solution of the ordinary differential equations in the system. Okay, this, this is the, the idea. This is okay, everything is okay, provided that, that this is, this is non-characteristic, it's, it's okay in this form, and also that uh, F is smooth enough, Bi is smooth enough, uh, sigma is a hyperplane, so it's a circle is smooth enough. Okay. Now, and the system of characteristic uh, was a system of ODE with, with a given initial condition. Now the exercise homework could be the following. So uh, homework, uh, let me introduce again a slightly more uh, involved notation. Uh, so let capital X of S Tx be the solution solution of the of our of the first part, if you want, of the first uh, block of the characteristic system uh, B of x, and assume that now. For the homework, assume for simplicity that we are in the linear case. So B does not depend on U. Hmm? is the linear case. And F is 0. OK, so hypothesis. Assume that B does not depend on U. Therefore, this is linear equation. And F is 0. So this is really a linear equation. Okay. So, and assume everything is smooth. So now, call, call, 
d of this would be. So assume also if you want, also independent of time if you want, okay? So really, really just uh, this. So now let, uh, so n dot is usually d over ds. And then, and then this, this is slightly different. Uh, this is um, on T, capital T times n. And also assume n equal to 1. Uh, so it's n, small n is equal to 1. So we have just time and space, just one dimension, space and time is one dimension, OK? So small n is equal to 1. Uh, b equal b of x, uh, f equal to 0. And, uh, and then now we want to solve, however, uh, and now, uh, how, however, our initial condition is a given time t instead of 0. OK? OK. So now uh, our solution, start, this is the starting time t. S is therefore larger than t. Huh? So S is huh? so capital T say is given. Huh? And uh, now I look at future points, but the initial time is now t, is not zero. Okay. So and let me denote it uh, the, the solution maybe by uh, x of s given t and x, OK? So x is given, t is given, initial conditions. s is the variable of the, of the function, one dimensional variable. So, and the solution depends, of course, on s. This we know, s of x we know. But now we have a new, as I told you, a new uh, symbol, because I want to also use maybe the initial time which is not 0 now, it's just any time t. OK. OK, and this, this is the usual stuff, just a new symbol. OK. So the, the homework say, then, the function u of tx equal to u bar of capital X of capital T, Tx, solves, solves. Well, what do, what, what do you believe that this, what, what do you think about this? What do you expect? What is this? Well, we have the following picture. This is time. Remember, time is the first variable. And for convenience, it is always vertical in our pictures. Huh? So time is here, x is here, capital T is here. This is time, capital T, this is T. And then we have a point. This is, OK, so now, what is this? inside the u bar. Well, I'm solving the system of characteristics, starting from this time here, and I go in the future up to capital T. So I put capital T here. So I evaluate the trajectory huh, at the final time. So I'm starting here. Huh, and then I, I have my trajectory starting at time t. And I go up to capital T. Hmm? So now what do you expect to be, what do you expect about this, uh, this u? In some sense now I'm, I'm really changing the, the time in some sense. Huh? Because last time we have, we have the following situation. If I start here uh, at time 0, then my solution u will be u bar at here in this, in this slice, in this slice. 
But now I'm going in, and so this was, I'm going back in some sense. Now I'm going forward. So what do you think? Well, the exercise consists in proving that this, is, this solves the usual PD ut plus b of x ux equal to 0. And what? The point is the, is the condition. u capital T x equal to u bar. u equal u bar. Thank you. Hmm? So this is interesting. Is this is a PD, not with the initial condition, but with the final condition. This is already of different kind with respect the, to what we have said up to now. So I'm, pre I'm pretending to solve a PD given the condition u bar at the end of the time. And I'm solving below, here, given the value here. So it's, I mean, it's different with respect to what we have done. So the exercise consists in proving this. Okay. It's not easy. It's not so easy. No matter. Well, it's uh, okay. So now, uh, then, so this is home. Then I think that we we uh, we. We, the, the, I left you also another exercise yesterday is to prove a claim. So let me check the claim now. So the claim was, I think, that uh, in the general form of the old notation, the previous notation, was to check that actually u of x equal y of s of x sigma of x solves the PD. This is the claim of yesterday. Okay, so first of all, one, if, uh, if, if x is on sigma, then s of x is equal to 0, then u of x is equal to y of 0 sigma of x, which is equal by construction by 2u bar phi of sigma of x. So this is simply to say that uh, the solution u, that the function u defined as follows satisfies the initial condition. OK. Next. Next two. So we uh, let, let us compute. Uh, so our PD, which is sum from i to one to n, the i of x, the u over the x i. So what is this? So we have to compute. So sum from i one to n, and then we have. So if I differentiate this with respect to xi, so I have dy over ds uh, 
uh, evaluated at s of x sigma of x, evaluated at s of x sigma of x, times uh, ds over the xi. Hmm? plus plus the sum from 1 to n bi of x dy sum Sigma k, y is evaluated at s of x sigma x, and uh, of course s is evaluated at x, so y evaluated at s of x sigma of x, d sigma x over d x g i d x i. Okay. OK, so now this is uh, independent of the index. Hmm? OK, so I can put it outside dy over ds. OK. Sum from 1 and di of x. Yes, over the x i, and then I can write it as uh, one dy over d sigma k one n di of x um, d sigma k over the x i. Okay, fine. Okay, so if I simply, uh, these are finite sums, so I, I can uh, exchange the, the order of summation, and I have this, okay? Okay, now, this is equal to x dot j by our system of uh, characteristics, so this is equal to y over ds, the sum x dot i psi plus the sum n minus 1 y over d sigma k and then this is equal to i from 1 to n x dot i d sigma k over d xi Remember that our system of characteristics says that x dot of i is equal to b i of x. This is b i of x. Okay, now I claim that that uh, I claim that this is equal to one. Huh? And this is equal to maybe let, let, let us let us check first this, okay? Hmm? If this is equal to one, this is y dot, and therefore this is f. F. So if this is equal to one, this is f. And if this is, if this is, maybe this, if this is equal to zero, then we are done. Okay.
So this is, so let me, let me replace, this is F, okay? So th this is, F, because it's Y dot, this is Y dot. Of F of X and Y. So, uh, so I repeat, if, if I'm able to prove that this is one, if I'm able to prove that this is one, then this, this implies that this object is equal to F, this equal to f plus something. If this something is zero, then then u <coughs> solves the PD. Hmm? So let us consider the following, the following fact. We have that S is a function of X. Hmm? Which, by the way, is a function of S and sigma. And this is equal to S for any S. Hmm? For any S in uh, minus delta delta. Therefore, I can differentiate this with respect to S. Hmm? Which gives me sum from I to N dS over dxi or at x sigma. At evaluated at x s sigma times uh, x dot i. So differentiating with respect to s. Huh? Okay. Hence, this is equal to 1. Hmm? OK, so this is, for the moment, equal to f plus the second sum k okay, from 1 to n minus 1 dy over d sigma k from i 1 to n x dot i d sigma k over d x i. Now, again, we, we can look at the following at the following equality. Because remember that this is, I mean, we, we are composing a map with its inverse. So we are at the end, when we make the composition of the map with its inverse, we get the identity. So, say sigma, say sig for any k from 1 to n minus 1, I have also this. Uh, for any k from 1 to n minus 1. Hmm? And now I differentiate it with respect to s. And I get sum sigma k that x i x dot i. So and this gives the claim and uh, what we were looking for. Okay. So this, I would say, uh, we, so uh, for 
up to now, we, we know we have learned something about the method of characteristics, and uh, for the moment, uh, we have confined ourselves to linear and quasi-linear first-order PDEs. So for the moment, uh, we have not, not studied. So we, 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 are cons we have included in our, in our situation, for instance, this important PDE. So this is included. This we know, at least for a short time. Huh? U equal U bar. In one, in one space dimension, so say in 0 t times r times 0. So this we know. I mean, we know. We are, in principle, we are able to, to study this because it is quasi-linear. So the nonlinearity is not in the higher derivative. But what we do not know for the moment, uh, this has not been done, is, for instance, this kind of PD. Huh? So you see, this is, uh, for instance, in, in just in space, if you want, or also ut minus grad u squared equal to something, equal to f. So keep in mind that we we, um, we were able to study this. So this is uh, in uh, this is part of a general theory that uh, we can write like this. Huh? Where now in one space dimension f of uh, f of uh, of tau is say one half tau square. In this, for this choice of f, we have this equation. Okay. More generally, we have this this object. So, do, are the symbols okay for you? So this is just uh, f. If everything is smooth, of course, this is equal to f prime of u u x. If everything is smooth. So it is clear that this contains this. Hmm? And this has a name. This is called Burger's equation, as I already said. And this, more generally, is called the conservation law. Conservation law. It is the prototype of first order scalar hyperbolic equation, so called conservation, conservation law. What is tau? Uh, tau is any, is, uh, any uh, variable just to, uh, to, to identify capital F in this special case. You, you can choose any variable you want, but we cannot maybe use x and t, so use any variable you want here. F of, uh, so what I'm saying is this. Um, we have our theory includes for short times and smooth initial conditions uh, such an equation, which is part of a more general kind of equations which are included by our theory for the moment, because this is sort of, if you write this like this, it is really a quasi-linear equation. So this we can do for short times. What we, we cannot do for the moment is this. Why? Because this is nonlinear. It's OK. It's nonlinear. We, we have treated nonlinear equation, but it's nonlinear in the higher derivative. It's nonlinear in ux. This was nonlinear, but not in ux alone. It was nonlinear because there, there was this product. So this is a different kind of equation, very important. Also this. And this is called Hamilton-Jacobi equation. Keep it up. Hamilton Jacobi, and it's a f say fully nonlinear, so called nonlinear, fully nonlinear first order partial differential equation. 
Uh, so something we are able to do with the method of characteristic and something we are not able to do. <laughs> okay? So for the moment, uh, let, us, so let us leave this open. We will see if we will have time to move through the study of this equation, which requires a system of characteristics which is more complicated than the previous one. So I mean, the transition from this system of characteristics to this is, is not, not, not so easy. And therefore, for the moment, we, we confine ourselves to this quasi-linear first order, OK? Fine. Um, so these are it's an it's a f important conservation law, which is the sp special character of this. Of course, it's first order. But you see, it is in divergence form. We have already discussed this point. The x is outside. It's not inside. So this is a divergence of something equal to 0. And when you have, and when you have a vector field such that its divergence is 0 in time space, this means that some quantity is conserved. This is divergence of a vector field u f of u in time space. Hmm? Remember that this, this is not true anymore, even in the linear case, as we said. So when you have the linear case u t plus b dot grad u, then this is not immediately in divergence form. So it is true that this is more difficult in some sense, because this is nonlinear. However, fortunately, at least, it is in divergence form. Hmm? OK. So now, <coughs> maybe I can leave you another homework. Homework. Uh, try to solve using oh, also the previous exercise was a Burgers equation with different notation. Uh, now I, I write it more conveniently. So for home at home, you should try to study to solve with the method of characteristic u equal u bar of x at 0, so u 0 equal u bar. So this, with this notation, this is standard common notation. What does it mean u of 0? Well, u of 0 means that this is a function of x. Means simply this. Hmm? Standard notation in semi-group theory. So u of 0 of x is equal of u0 x. More generally, more generally, u of t of x is equal to u of t x. <clears throat> this is, in, in several places, is a convenient notation because, in some sense, you, you are thinking about this given t as a function of x. So you are thinking about, about u as a curve taking t into u of t. So t going into u of t. But what is this? This is a curve starting from one dimensional parameter space into a functional space, because this is a function of x. So at any time, I have a curve. But the curve is inside a big space of infinite dimension. So I have a curve in infinite dimensions. And so uh, I, when I use this notation, it's convenient because somehow you are changing. You're not looking as a function of uh, the product Tx, two variables. But instead, you are thinking maybe more frequently to a curve in the infinite dimensional spaces of functions of x only. <clears throat> so this is a different viewpoint. So this means this, and, and where u bar of x 
is equal one divided by one. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so now, now I would like to say something. So this is home, again using the method of characteristics for sufficiently short times. Here there is an interesting, an interesting point. It happens that if you write down the characteristics, it happens that at some moment, well, the characteristics maybe are defined for large times, but it may happen in this case, it happens that two characteristics uh, have an intersection point. Hmm? This we have already uh, discussed very sh shortly this point. This is an interesting, an interesting point because it happens that if you, in the trajectories of your system of ODEs at some moment uh, have an intersection. This means that certainly our uh, method doesn't work after this time. So our solution is defined for short times here, but sh certainly not at this time and after this time. Huh? The idea is that uh, uh, we, we are not able to choose the value of u because if we go back in this direction, we have a value of u bar here. But if we go back in this direction, we have another value of u bar here. So which is the value of u? We don't know. So this is a so-called formation of a singularity a solution. So, <clears throat> but at least, so try to understand this point. But at least for short times, our method works because the initial condition is very smooth. So this is an initial condition like this, <coughs> and it's okay, you see one. Hmm? So even starting from a C1 initial condition and having <coughs> such a kind of PD, it may happen that at some moment we don't know how to define the solution. You. Hmm? Okay. So now I would like to say something in the direction of uniqueness of solutions. The solution that we have constructed, we have already um, said that actually, necessarily, uh, the solution, local solution that we have constructed is the solution of our problem. It's not only a solution, but it's the solution. Okay? Now I'd like to say something more precisely on this. So I would like to maybe not, I will sketch, sketch a proof. Maybe not rigorously, completely rigorously proof, but I will sketch a proof of the following result, so theorem. <clears throat> so let u, v, say in C1, in uh, in time space, so uh, in just for simplicity, I'm working in one space dimension, and I take this for simplicity and assume that u and v are c1, and assume that uh, ut plus, sorry, I change notation, I'm more used to use this notation. So now this small f has nothing to do with the right hand side of, uh, of our previous PD. Is, is, is f of u is what I wrote before was capital F. So please me, let me please let me use small f here and 
do not do not make confusion between this f and the right hand side f of tx u that we have written before. Yeah. Okay? Because this is a common way to write conservation laws usually. So and assume this <coughs> this in zero plus infinity times r. And assume also that u and v are bounded, so let let, let us call maybe, I don't know, L. So 2C1 and bounded. One is a sub-solution, some solution. And the other one is a super solution. And assume that U of 0 is less than than u of zero. Um, okay. F is C one. And then in the conclusion which I will sketch the proof, not, not completely proof, but I will try to sketch at least a proof. Then what do you expect here, the conclusion to be? So I start with one function below the other one. Maybe they also have some self, maybe they also, the graphs of u of 0 and v of 0 maybe also touch somewhere. And then, <coughs> however, this is a smooth subsolution, and this is a smooth super solution, starting one below the other. Well, maybe it is reasonable to, to expect that then this for any t. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so now, this is not an easy, I mean, <coughs> but which, do, do you see that, that in, if now we have possibly two solutions, if two solutions of the same conservation law with this, the same initial conditions, then from this, it, they should be equal, right? It is clear, because if I have u and v, which are two solutions, so you have equality here and equality here, and they, you know that initially they are equal, so they solve the same PDE, the same Cauchy problem, because you have equality here, equality here, and the same initial condition. Huh? Then they must be equal, because well, it is immediate. Because if this is an equality in particular, it is a sub-solution. And this is a super solution. So if this is true, then one is below the other. But now we can reverse. Also, u is a super solution because it's a solution. And v is a sub-solution because it is, a, it is a solution. So, and they are equal, and so the, we have also the, the, the other inequality. And therefore, they must be equal. Is, is it clear? Is it clear? No, it's not clear. So, uh, consequence. If u and v in C1 bounded, huh? C1 and bounded, huh? time space. Do you know this symbol, L infinity, Bound, bounded? OK, if u and v are smooth and bounded solutions <coughs> to Hmm? 
q bar smooth enough, okay, then mu is equal to v. This is the consequence. Hmm? Why it is so? Indeed. From this, uh, so let me be more precise. Let us write uh, maybe W, because U and V, uh, U and v are occupied as symbols. So let me call W T and W here and W. Okay. So, indeed, U is a subsolution. V is a super solution, and U of zero is less than or equal. Uh, U of zero, which is equal to bar, is less than or equal than V of zero, which is equal to U bar. Huh? Therefore, U is a subsolution. V is a super solution. They, we have this inequality at time zero, and therefore, at least, uh, U is less than or equal than V by this. And conversely, now I can exchange the role of V and U. Exchanging the role of V and U. So now V is a subsolution, U is a super solution, V of zero is equal to U bar less than equal to U of zero equal to U bar. And therefore U equal to V. And therefore the U. Okay, this is the consequence of uh, so this is this is this is comparison principle uh, weak could call uh, okay it is comparison principle between uh, subsolution and supersolution which has a consequence of uniqueness. There are hypotheses here of course uh, in particular uh, the smoothness assumptions boundedness assumptions. And uh, okay. Hmm? Okay, so now let us sketch, try to sketch at least the proof. So let us consider the function w of t, which is by definition u of t minus v of t. Hmm? This is the definition. So what we know, this is c1 bounded also. And what we know, what now we try to find an equation satisfied by W. Of course, these are nonlinear. So it's not clear. I mean, if I take the difference of the, the idea would be take the difference of these two equations, these two left hand sides. But this is nonlinear. So it's not, it's not so easy to arrange things so that W satisfies something. Okay. Uh, and also, we know that initially, At time zero, by this assumption, W is non-positive. Hmm? OK? So the, the thesis of the, the, of the theorem is to show that W is non-positive. So thesis, W is non-positive. Hmm? 
Okay. So this is our thesis. And now we take the difference of these two. Uh, of these two. Hmm? So ut minus vt plus f of ux minus f of vx is less than or equal than 0. Okay? Because this is less than or equal than 0, and then this minus this is still less than or equal than 0. Okay? So now this is, of course, uh, so this is, of course, wt plus f of ux minus f of vx less than or equal than 0. Now let us write, uh, say, f of y minus f of eta. So what, what, what we can write this in using? Outside. Ah, thank you, sorry. <laughs> this is very important. Thanks, sorry. See, otherwise, this would be an hamilton jacobi equation. So, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, So now uh, we have to express this uh, difference, f of u minus f of y. So, so let me rewrite this as follows, w of t plus uh, f of u minus f of y, x less than or equal than c. OK, and now we want in some, some, in some way to put w here. Because W here is not, pre is not present anymore. Okay. And so we, we write this. And what do we do? Say, introduce uh, for, in, for any S equal, for any S in 0, 1, introduce phi of S equal to F of S eta plus 1 minus sy, for instance, so that, um, so you, you think as you think of uh, eta and y now as fixed, and s is moving. Huh? And so now, what is uh, f of eta, f of y, sorry, minus f of eta, it is phi. Hmm? Phi of zero minus phi of one. So let's do this. <laughs> phi one minus phi of zero, uh, uh, which is the integral. <coughs> this. So it is the integral from 0 to 1 of f prime of s y plus 1 minus s eta ds times y minus eta outside the integral. Hmm? Hmm? Sorry, could you please? I don't, I don't know. Uh, f, f is the infinity of R, uh, so the domain, say, is whatever. Uh, is everything. Thank you. So what well, the question was, is this, is this in the domain of F? But F, for simplicity, is everywhere defined. Okay. 
and also is C1. So, uh, so, so at the end, I have this. Now I apply this to our situation. So, uh, so let, let me write it here. So uh, it is y minus eta integral from 0 to 1. So I just, just copy it, s of y plus 1 minus s of eta in ds. So now I can apply this equality with the choice y equal to u of tx. Now tx is fixed. Uh, because the, the, the meaning of this is exactly wt at tx plus f of u at tx minus f of v at tx x less than or equal to zero hmm? at any tx. OK? So now what I do is that I, I write in place of y u of tx and pla in place of eta um, v of tx. OK, so I apply this V of Tx. OK, so that uh, I can now put everything here. So so that I have W of T at Tx plus <coughs> plus u of tx, so actually w of tx huh? times integral f prime of s u of tx. Sorry, it is, let me use more space. f prime of s u of tx plus 1 minus s v of tx ds. And then x Okay, so let me let me call just for simplicity this equal to f of u of tx v of tx. So that I rewrite my conclusion, my partial conclusion as uh, uh, v f of u v x less than or equal to zero. Hmm? So let, let me keep my new notation. So f of u v is equal to s of u plus 1 minus s of u yes. Now, now, let us do the following trick. Uh, let, let us consider a function uh, h. So the function h of, uh, so this is the graph of h. This is, this is the graph of H. So, so H is the heavy side function. So H of, uh, of uh, tau is equal to 1 
tau is positive to 0, tau is negative. So h is not 0, so we can multiply this by h of w. because h is not 0. It's not, it's, not, it's not negative. OK. Now I would like to write down this as a derivative of something. And so let, 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 let us do this. So what is h w w t? Hmm? So it is wt when w is positive and 0 when w is negative. So here I, I am not so rigorous eh? because I should then, should then, should uh, uh, say what happens when w is equal to 0, but but doesn't matter. So uh, no, this is just a sketch. So. So this is equal to this. And therefore, it is also equal almost everywhere. Okay? It is almost equal to the positive part of w. Positive part of w, you know what it is. Uh, because so this is the max. Zero. So this is the positive part of x. And so, indeed, what is this? Well, the positive, if w is positive, the positive part is equal to w. And therefore, I have wt. If w is negative, the positive part is 0. And therefore, the derivative is 0, at least almost everywhere you should accept such a kind of equality. Also, almost everywhere, say, more or less. Now, also, so, so, so this is equal to positive part t plus w f of u v x h of v less than or equal to 0. Now I claim that also this is, I can write this uh, I can write this as follows, again almost everywhere now. Let me check this. So let me check this. So what is this? When is equal to? If w is positive, this is equal to 1. So this is equal to w f of u v x. If w is negative, this is equal to 0. Now let us look to this. It is what? If w is positive, then w plus is equal to w. And therefore, this is equal to w f of u v x. If w is negative, 
this is zero, and therefore everything is zero. Huh? And therefore this more or less. Hmm? OK, here there should be various details because, but, but anyway, let, let us accept a little bit this. Uh, this way. So uh, we have uh, this um, conclusion that at almost everywhere, say in time space, we have this, uh, this inequality. Mm -hmm. Now, now fix any time positive. Fix two points here. Hmm? And let us consider the following. Let me call this E. Now, I have to tell you what is this B plus C T bar. This is A minus C T bar. And uh, C is a constant that, for me, is uh, C is a constant that, for me, is the maximum of f prime tau such that tau. So we know that u and v were bounded. So we wrote u and v were in an infinity. So they were bounded. And so now, so uh, the argument of f prime is in between minus capital L and L. Because u and v are in between minus capital L and L, and this is a convex combination of the values. So, uh, so what what really matters here is something in between minus L and L, and so I can take constant c, say like this. Hmm? Definition. Take this as a definition. Yeah. I mean, u and v by assumption are bounded. F is C1 everywhere. So in particular, it's bounded on the big uh, box uh, minus L. L. Okay? And this, the bound, I call this C. Now, given that C, I can take lines x minus ct equal constant and x plus ct equal constant. Huh? Hmm? And now I have the set E. Uh, and so I can integrate over E this quantity. This is non-positive. And I integrate over E, non-positive object, and therefore this T is non-positive. Sorry, I don't have to erase this. 
uh, I can take advantage of the fact that this is a conservation law. So this is actually a divergence of something. Do you know what is the divergence of a vector field? So if I have a vector field, uh, vector field time component, space component, uh, now the time component, space component. So this is not a derivative. It's the time com first component, second component, OK? The, the, the divergence of eta is uh, uh, d over dt eta plus d over dx eta x, OK? Hmm? So now you see, this is uh, in divergence form. Time derivative plus x derivative. And therefore, now we can use a result which allows us to move the integral on a two-dimensional region on an integral of the boundary of this region. Do you know this result? This is the so-called Gauss-Green theorem, or divergence theorem also. Maybe it is better that I recall you what is this result. So um, so for the moment, is OK? This is a de quite delicate, clearly delicate <laughs> uh, result, of course. So. Uh, So let me recall you that uh, this theorem that will be very useful also in the study of elliptic equations, uh, Laplace equation, Poisson equation, and so on. So the, let me write this for once uh, for all the following. So let uh, assume, uh, so theorem, very, very, maybe one of the most important theorems in analysis. So maybe it requires some comment. So let me, let me open a quick parenthesis one of the most basic stones in analysis is the following theorem. So let omega into R n. So n is bigger or equal than 1. B bounded, say open if you want. But more interesting, boundary of omega, assume it is C1 for the moment. Hmm? Ah. Uh, second parenthesis. So for any point, meaning of uh, well, the question is, what is the meaning of this boundary of omega is C1? OK. So maybe I can, uh, I can tell you this. So this is uh, omega. Hmm? This is a point P on the boundary. OK, you have some holes everywhere. I don't know. But anyway, if you have a point on the boundary of the omega, I say that uh, the boundary is C1 if for any point P on the boundary, there exists a neighborhood of P hmm, such that if I take the intersection of this neighborhood in the ambient space, so solid neighborhood with the boundary, hmm, then this uh, is a C1 uh, surface, hypersurface. Uh, so th this is a graph. See, this can be written as a graph locally around. So this, just this red part, is a graph of a function f from some open set into R n minus one. Hmm? graph of f into r, f is c1, with respect to a suitable orthogonal coordinate system, system. 
And if you want, we can add this, that. Uh, so this is uh, the graph of f. And the subgraph, so what is below the graph of f, is locally this part. OK? Hmm. So this is the graph of a smooth function of class C1 with respect to a suitable to a orthogonal coordinate system. So locally, uh, this, is, this can be made of pieces of graphs of class C1, of function of class C1. So even if you are here, of course, you are not a graph in this direction, but you are a graph in this direction, in this direction, OK? So this part, of course, cannot be seen as a graph in this direction, but, but can be seen as a graph in this direction. So, and this uh, means that uh, the boundary of omega is C1. Hmm? So can you say the boundary of E is not C1? No, thank you. This is the next comment. This is a good comment. It's an important. The question is, OK, now we are stating a theorem which cannot apply, be applied here because this is not C1, but just Lipschitz. OK. And indeed, this is the next comment after this theorem. <laughs> thank you. So bounded open, and then let eta from omega into Rn be C1. a C1 vector field, OK? Then if I integrate over omega the divergence of eta in the x, the theorem says that this is equal to the scalar product between, between this. And now I explain the meaning of the symbols. Maybe I, I use a dot just for being Sorry, dot. Meaning of the symbols. OK, this is a Lebesgue integral. This is a divergence of a vector field. So uh, C1, ten, sorry, intersection uh, C. Just let us write this. OK, just to, to be, just to know, for instance, that eta is continuous up to the boundary. Huh? So eta is continuous up to the boundary. The divergence assume that this, so this is a Lebesgue integral. Uh, and so there is nothing to say, but this is a more complicated. This is an integral over the boundary of omega. This is a scalar product between eta, which is defined up to the boundary, and the exterior unit normal. Hmm? The exterior unit normal to the boundary. So new. is exterior exterior unit normal vector field two so at any point of the boundary I have two normals the interior and two unit normals the length is one the interior and the exterior this and this and I choose the exterior. Hmm? And the length is 1. This is the scalar product in, in Rn between two vectors. Hmm? And this is the surface measure. So this, I, you should know, is not, not so easy to define, is a surface integral. You have to integrate on the boundary. So if you don't know what is this, uh, now there is the, the lecture is over, but uh, if you don't know what is this, I will tell you tomorrow how to compute. 
or if you know, I can continue. And so this is uh, this. This is the H n minus one. The symbol is H because of Hausdorff. It's so called. Well, in physics, they use this symbol, this sigma. I don't know if which kind of symbol you, you are used to use. In physics, is the sigma is the the area element, but more precisely, this is called the n minus one dimensional Hausdorff measure. And this is maybe the correct way to I don't, I don't want really to to insist on this. Uh, well, somebody knows about this theorem? Or, or just is a new fact for you? It's completely new? Is there something Green's Yeah, it is. It is the Green's theorem. It is it has several names. Um, Gauss-Green theorem, divergence theorem, for instance. Hmm? Is completely new for you? No. Have you ever? Have you seen? Have you ever seen? Okay. Maybe the notations are strange for you. Maybe what is really strange for you is this. Doesn't matter. You know what does it mean? Uh, it's the uh, surface integral. So uh, do not take do not take too too attention. Do not pay too attention to this symbol. If we know what it is, we know how to compute. That's important. The, the important thing. So now the, 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 the lecture is over. The point is that we cannot apply this theorem to this because omega is not C one. Hmm? But this usually happens also in physics, because when you, you, you apply this theorem in physics, what do you do? Several times you apply it to, to portion of cylinders, for instance. Huh? Well, this is omega, but this is not C1, <laughs> of course. But still you apply it. Well, uh, there are generalizations of this theorem which allows to, to weaken this this regularity assumption. In particular, uh, and this, what I will write now, is not the most general, but in particular, we can, we can, we can, in this form, Lipschitz open set. What does it mean, Lipschitz? Well, it means that locally, you are a graph of a Lipschitz function. What is a Lipschitz function? is something which maybe is not differentiable, but essentially it has corners in the, possibly corners in the, in the graph, like this. So this is a Lipschitz curve, by the way. So now the, the only point that matters is, well, this is okay, but then what is this at the corner? Hmm? Well, now this is not defined at the corner. You see? The exterior normal here is this, and the exterior normal is this. But at this point, the exterior normal is not defined, because the tangent space is not defined. So what do we do about this in this integral? Well, there is a result which says that the number of points where this is not defined uh, is not seen by this measure. Has zero measure in this sense. Zero measure. This is a non-trivial result. But anyway, for instance, in this picture, what does it mean making a line integral? Well, it's simply you integrate on this open segment, you integrate in this open segment, this open segment, this open segment. You don't do not take care about these four points. Four points are of measure zero with respect to the one dimensional measure. So I really don't need to take into account these four points. So at the, 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 the end, we can apply the Gauss-Green theory. And so the, now the lecture is over, and now we will try to continue tomorrow about this.